Doctor, you talked about infants a little while ago. Can you talk about the exposure that they have to, uh, to fluoride? Well, the problem with the infants is um, their small body weight. So the effective dose, uh, what we call dosage, mm -hmm. dosage, uh, dose is milligrams per day, right? The mm -hmm. quantity that you take in. But in terms of what could cause harm, the, the most important figure is milligrams per kilogram body weight. You divide the dose by the body weight. And then when you get to the dosage, which is what will harm you, this is like the effective concentration anywhere in the body. For babies, it's huge. So I already said that a bottle-fed baby is getting 200 times more fluoride than a breastfed baby. But now this fluoride that it gets is, is confronted with a very small body weight. So we're very concerned about babies, and we know that it's causing harm because of the dental fluorosis rates, but they are still denying that it's doing any other harm to their bones or, or brains. And as I say, we've got to offset that now with 33 studies which shows a lowering of IQ with fairly modest levels. So the, the Harvard has just done a review of this. Two scientists at Harvard, Anna Choi, who's Chinese, and Philip Grandjean uh, from the Harvard School of Public Health did a meta-analysis. They looked at 27 of these studies. 26 of them showed a lowering of IQ between the high fluoride exposure and the low fluoride. That's remarkably consistent. And in their meta-analysis, it was uh, the reduction in IQ was about half of one standard deviation, which, and it was highly significant. And it amounts to about seven IQ points. So in these villages, the, between the high and the, the low, the average was a, a drop of seven IQ points. Now, you've got to remember that those levels are higher than we have, but not that much. Nine of those studies, the high village was less than three parts per million. And one of the studies has a threshold at 1.9 parts per million. And the most recent study looked at children drinking water at between 0.3 parts per million and three parts per million. So this, this overlaps our range. And what they, they didn't do this crude business of comparing a high village with a low village. What they did was to measure the fluoride in the children's urine and their IQ. So they got two, they got the, the level of the fluoride in the urine and their IQ. And they got a number of children in each categories. And they found a, a highly significant reduction in IQ correlating with the level of fluoride in the urine. So basically, you got a, a measure of individual exposure. Now, we have studies. We don't have enough studies of fluoride in the urine amongst American children, but there's a, a study from England, and I think it was about 5 or 6% of the urine levels in England were above three parts per million. So we have children in Western societies whose level of fluoride in their urine is corresponding to the levels of fluoride in the Chinese study, which showed a lowering of IQ. So I don't think that they can get away with maintaining that, oh, those are just high levels, very high levels, mm. which is not true. You know, I was really surprised and disgusted, in fact, that the Pew Charitable Trust has got involved in this promotion of fluoridation. Um, I, obviously, I don't think they did their homework. But when they looked at the Choi study, they said, oh, the levels were very high, 11.5 parts per million. Well, talk about cherry picking uh, the data. Of the 27 studies, I think only two were above eight parts per million. As I already mentioned, nine were about below three parts per million. So to quote this 11.5 parts per million as if it was the average mm -hmm. was ridiculous. I mean, that is, that is undergraduate stuff. I, I'd expect an undergraduate to try to get away with that in a term paper, but not the Pew Charitable Trust who pride themselves on their independent research. This is pathetic. They also confused 
the 0.45 drop of a deviation, standard deviation, it was standard uh, median difference, or SMD, which is a statistical measure. They confused that with the number of IQ points. So they were talking about a drop of 0.45 IQ points instead of what it amounted to, which is a drop of seven IQ mm. points. But again, I think you're, you get an inkling of politics trumping science. Mm. And again, why? Is it, is it through ignorance? Is it through um, zealotry? Are they so convinced themselves that this is a good idea that they want everything to fall neatly into place and that if a study farm for, uh, finds harm that it's a junk study. And if a scientist uh, argues against it, writes a book against it, then he's a junk scientist. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's working backwards. For some reason, there are people out there in our health agencies who are more con determined to protect this practice than they are to protect mm -hmm. the health of the American people. And I find that rather frightening.